Don't you cut Sunday school now. John, the eighth chapter. John is recording a conversation between Jesus and the Jews. You remember? Yes, sir. The Jews is dealing with Jesus. They're trying to attack him and trick him and get him in a public place and shame him. Jesus is dealing with the Jews. He ain't backing off them. Right. See, Jesus was not no punk. Yes, sir. Right. They want to make you think Jesus was a punk. Love everybody. Thank it's a you. damn lie. That's right. That's right. And they make you a coward that uses this so-called divine love as a real ruse and cover for your real cowardice and fear to stand up like a man against those who would seek to oppress you. That's right. <laughs> they give you this thing and they say to you, look here, Jesus love everybody. That's a lie. Yes, right. Now, look, look at what's happening now. Jews is dealing with Jesus. Jesus is dealing back with the Jews. The Jews said, listen, same thing they say to Mr. Farrakhan. They say, look, why don't we just love each other? We all have one father. We're all family. Listen, Farrakhan. We're sick of your black racism. We're sick of your hatred. We're sick of your reverse discrimination. Let's all just love. We're all Americans. They want to deceive you and me about their origin in the world. But yes. Jesus didn't let them get away with it. He said, don't claim we got the same father. He was a lie. See, if Jesus would have been with us, he'd have been like, uh-uh, no, nah, hell no, nah, hold up. Jesus talking. Jesus said, you... Don't claim fellowship with me. He said, if God were your father, you would love me. He knew God was his father and the father of his people. He knew that. And I'm not talking about the biological father. Ain't God ain't got no begotten son in the sense that you begot all the children you got. I'm talking about all of your children, not just the ones in the north side. I'm talking about the east side, west side, the ones you got upstate in Orangeburg, you left behind in South Carolina State. I'm talking about all your children. You begot them. He's not begotten in that sense. I'm telling you, Jesus said, if God were your father, you would love me. But you seek to kill me. A man that has told you the truth. Don't try to run that small time stuff over on me. You just like your dad, who was a liar and a murderer. And in the beginning, he abode not in the truth. You're going to do your father's will because you just like your no good dad. He was dealing. He didn't sound like no punk to me. Huh? Jesus at one point said in John 8 and 32, he said, ye Jews, ye and black people, ye and listeners, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall what? No, it didn't say that. Come on, tell me. Tr don't be telegraphing my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> There's a difference. See, the truth is not going to set you free. For it to set you free indicates that you had a previous desire. And that an obstacle had to be removed in your way to allow you to exercise the will that had already formulated in your mind. No, the truth is not going to set us free. The truth is going to have to make us free. Oh man, I'm about to kill this thing. The truth is going to make us free. Is that all right? The truth will make you free. That means that Negroes have not yet formulated the idea in our mind to be free of this peck of wood. Don't be sad. Some of y'all might be in the room. You might have slipped in. I don't know. You all look good, but I don't know. <laughs> there might be somebody here that still believe in white supremacy and black inferiority. There might be somebody in here that still believe the, ice, uh, the white man ice is colder than sugar sweeter. But see, when the truth has to make you free, then your intention to be set free has not already formed. You say, well, I thought he was talking to the Jews. How is the truth going to set or make them free when they were battling with him and they were people who were already free? That's exactly right. They said to him, how can the truth make us free when we have never been in bondage to any man? Now, if they had been in bondage under Pharaoh, they would have admitted to Jesus that they had once been slaves. But they said, we've never been in bondage to any man, proving that Anwar Sadat was correct in his conversation with Walter Cronkite. Huh? Proving, bless you, bless you, those were two, how'd you hold them in like that? It's the coolest sneeze I've ever seen. It's cool. The Jews said... Come on, y'all. We, we laughing a little bit. We laughing a little bit, but, 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 but come on, let's focus now. Did you Teach, are you all right? Um, all right, praise be to Allah. I don't want to make you sit for detention at that. Walter Cronkite was told the real truth. They were not 
in the slavery that we were in, but yet they were in a slavery of their own that they had no intention to be set free from. They are in a slavery to sin. A slavery and a bound relationship to the idea of their superiority and the inferiority of other people. Islam, as taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, is freeing to the black man, liberating to the black man, but it's also liberating the white man. It's liberating the Caucasian from the old wrong idea of white supremacy that has held him in the position of devil if he accepts that he has been made a devil and accepts the responsibility to live as other than devil he can be preserved in his individual life for a time beyond the destruction of the masses of his people but he has to be made free to do that y'all all right yes, sir. Jesus said the truth shall make you free we have to end now check this out truth gonna make you free you okay yes sir now, we got back to Moses and Pharaoh. Go down, Pharaoh. Or go down, Moses. Tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. Right? Yes, sir. Pharaoh laughed at Moses. Pharaoh, <laughs> dig this lane. Come on. Challenging my game. Come on. You must be out of your head, chump. Come on. You're going to tell me to let your people go. I got y'all making bricks without straw. Y'all done built me cities and towns. What do you mean telling me? Let y'all go. You built the whole area around the harbor in Charleston. Let you go. You built these antebellum mansions with the big white poles in Charleston. And you think I'm going to let you go? <laughs> Nigga, are you crazy? You built Jackson, Mississippi for me to ride up and down the Magnolia Trail. You think I'm going to let you go? Man, you built the dam across Muscle Shoals. And you built the Hoover Dam in the West. You, you roped dogies in Texas and rode herds up to Kansas. You think I'm going to let you go? Nigga, are you out of your mind? You built the rice uh, system in South Carolina. Taught me how to grow cotton in Alabama. Nigga, you taught me how to make sugar cane go down at the sith of a machete. You the one taught me how to pick pineapples when they was just right in Florida. And you think I'm going to let you go? Hell no. <laughs> He laughed at Moses. Right. Moses stepped off, but not before a confrontation in which Moses showed a glimpse of his power yes, sir. by the miraculous way of God. I want you to study it now. Study that whole book of Exodus. Sister teacher, are we ready to go? I just want you to read the first clause in Exodus chapter 1, verse 10, that begins with the word come. Now, y'all listen, listen. Now, God says, I will come. He's talking about his own coming. Now listen to what Pharaoh said when he talked. Come on. Hold it. Come on. This Pharaoh talk. What's next? Let's. Stop. Let us. He's encouraging a group of people to act. He has no power independently. But the nature of wickedness is to draw others into its whirlpool, its eddy of destruction, yes, right. to drown them in the drain of the choking damnation of God. See, he says, come on, you, my, my magicians, you, my scientists, my enchanters, my trusted nigger leaders. Right. Come on. Let us deal. How? Wow. Wisely with them. Right. Let us deal. Now that, some of you have heard your lawyer in a courtroom, don't raise your hand, <laughs> defend you against a charge of conspiracy. Yes, some of you sisters got girlfriends that you went to school with in high school whose boyfriend was a baller, shot caller. Huh? Who was deep in the game who had money and sold a little packages of dope and you thought, don't tell us, don't sit down yet. Don't sit down yet. Should she get detention? Oh, okay, all right, all right. Second grade teacher, this may never happen for me again. I may never get a chance to right some wrongs down. You sitting down again? You stand right there. 
<laughs> my teacher used to tell me, stand right there. I'd be like, Dad, where? She'd be like, not there, all the way over there. 